I wipe away all of the subsurface geology out there, 3D can help us identify hydrocarbon deposits. Small little areas or reservoirs or layers that are saturated with oil and gas. And I can actually do this in this 2007 data set to a fairly good degree of accuracy. Why? For one reason. There is a, uh, a well board that we talked about, that Adams Resources Hooker Chemical Number 1 well. We go on 86, there's a green pin that comes down through here. And it actually encountered the oil and, gas, oil and gas sand, logged it, cased it, produced it for 15 years, and when they shot this 2007 data set, it has a seismic signature of that reservoir. So therefore, we have an analog. You know, it's basically, you know, this is an apple, and these other zones look just like that apple. There are slow velocity signatures in the rock uh, record on the seismic data set that we can identify hydrocarbons. So what I've actually done is I, with this 2007 data set, is not only understand the entire uh, geologic structure of this area uh, at approximately 2007, but I've also extracted out what I think could be hydrocarbons that may potentially become culprits that feed the sinkhole. And that's an important thing to understand. Um, what that leads to is that now we're going to be able to tie this subsurface data from 2007 to 2013 and look for distinct changes. If there is a disturbed rock zone, if there are other hydrocarbon events that could be feeding or could be a culprit to feed the sinkhole. And that's what we lead to the next one, is that even though we just have a piece of this data set, which is, this is approximately a third of a square mile, I'll move to the next one, Gary. This is what the design that Boom Geophysical is laying out as of about January 30th. I think you guys were uh, rolled out a map by Kevin Hill at the podium last year, uh, or last week. I had a chance to uh, review all of the panels and look at all the parts for the, from the uh, Assumption Parish YouTube videos, and so that was really helpful for me to see what their uh, progress is. That's what it looked like last week, and this data set is such, uh, it's a very robust data set, it's much higher resolution than we'd see in 2007. So by comparing it to what we know in 2007 to what they shoot in 2013, we're going to see really what the rock record is, is doing underneath the ground, underneath the sinkhole, and help us to identify uh, ways to recover and uh, quickly recover from this particular event. You go to the next slide, Gary. Uh, this is what I was given uh, through Boom Geophysical as of about February 5th, and they're monitoring their progress. And as you can see from that previous slide, where that was the ideal design, they have made some moves for surface obstacles. Now what you see on here is uh, patches of gray which fall along the, the pipeline quarters, corridors. Here is the uh, Bayou Corner subdivision, and they've made some modifications in their design so that it, it doesn't fall on a, a railroad crossing, it doesn't fall on a uh, highway, it doesn't fall on a, uh, a container or a tank or something like that, so we have to move for surface obstacles. And the green represents areas they've got permitted, and the orange, as of February 5th, is where they actually have survey activity. Uh, from I understand from the reports on the last two days, they're starting to do a lot more survey activity up in here. And as soon as they've done enough GPS surveying of where their sources and their receiver points are out, they'll probably send in a waves of drill, drill boat or uh, drill crews at that point, whether it be airboat or uh, vibes or starting to drill some shot holes. So you go to the next slide, uh, this kind of summarizes what my future expectations are of this whole project, this is what I'll end with. Um, my path forward is really to obtain the 2013 data set and do an independent study of it. Uh, I think it's important for us to have our view, the state's view, of this data set versus just Boone Geophysicals or Texas Brine's interpretation. I'm going to take that and integrate it and revise my, my study that I just showed you on, on the map because there will be revisions because we're going to go from a coarse data set even though it looked pretty good in 2007 to something that's very high resolution that we can see possibly where these culprit paths are. 
I'm going to assess the differences in the volumes to look for changes, which is really what happened before the sinkhole to what happened now. Identify any oil and gas reservoirs. And these, these are not commercial deposits. These are any oil and gas reservoirs that are present in the area that could be uh, possible culprits. I'm going to quantify those, and then I'm going to uh, attempt to estimate a time to deplete these reservoirs and help with the team right here to understand what's the fastest road to recovery in the area and what do we need to do. So uh, thanks for your time, and I'll answer any questions that you got. Yes, sir? Yes. How far down do you know? Did you get close to the three cameras? The data set itself, uh, again, was shot in 2007, and it illustrated that not only do you see the top of the salt, and I'm just kind of looking at you as a vertical profile, you can see the top of the salt from 500 feet, and it comes down and it follows a fairly vertical line, and that approximately 5,000 feet it seems to become recumbent, or overturns, or overhangs. And then it swings in a little bit, and then it, from 5,800 feet to 6,000 feet, turns again, and seven to 10,000 feet, it moves further out to the west. So that data set is fairly clear when you tie it with the well control as to where this salt wall is located. Hope that answers your question. Thank you very much.